In 1905, Charles Richer was conducting experiments into the mysterious substance known as ectoplasm. Witnesses at seances often saw ectoplasm float in space, taking the form of hands. These ghostly ectoplasmic hands would then float about the room, picking up small objects such as thimbles and placing them on the hands of sitters during seances. Writing in 1921, British scientist Sir Oliver Lodge, the pioneer of radio, commented on the research into ectoplasm conducted by Baron von Schrenk Notzing, who had taken extensive amounts of photographs of ectoplasm seeping through the clothes of a medium called Eva C. According to Oliver Lodge, ectoplasm sometimes took on a semi-luminous appearance and was able to form an almost perfect three-dimensional replica of a full-bodied living person. Ectoplasmic hands were seen clutching the legs, arms and hands of sitters, just as William Crookes had witnessed and photographed during his seances with British medium Florence Cook. Incredible as it sounds, wax impressions were taken of these ectoplasmic hands, which show real fingerprints. This phenomena was witnessed by John Logie Baird, the Scotsman who took William Crookes's cathode ray tube and combined it with the pioneering research of Sir Oliver Lodge. John Logie Baird used ultra-high frequency or UHF waves to transmit invisible sound and pictures through the air at a frequency so high some said it would affect the spirits who lived in the ether. In the mid-1920s John Logie Baird also invented Noctovision which was a form of television which could record images in total darkness using infrared rays. In 1926, Sir Oliver Lodge and his daughter visited Baird's laboratory and was extremely impressed by this new invention. John Logie Baird's noctovision would lead him to become involved with experiments into the spirit world. One day in 1927, a professor from a Scottish university visited Baird's laboratory and asked if it was possible to use noctovision equipment to record ectoplasm and spirits at a seance. According to John Logie Baird's own memoirs published by the Royal Television Society, Baird immediately agreed to take part in a seance, which was conducted by a medium called Marjorie. Ten years before, the young son of Marjorie had committed suicide, slicing his own throat with a razor. The police had encased the blood-stained razor complete with fingerprints in a glass case. After her son's suicide, Marjorie was heartbroken and joined a spiritualist church in order to make contact with her dead son's spirit. During a seance, she fell into a trance and ectoplasm began to exude from her body, which formed a solid hand. Spirits told her that this hand was the hand of her own dead son.
the Scottish professor from Glasgow University leading the investigation into Marjorie, told John Logie Baird that he had made a wax impression of the thumbprint of his ectoplasmic hand during one of the seances. The professor compared the wax fingerprint from the spirit hand with a thumbprint on the razor, which Marjorie's son had used to commit suicide. To John Logie Baird's amazement, the two fingerprints were absolutely identical. This would not be the end of John Logie Baird's extensive involvement in the spirit world. Not long after this incident, the ghost of none other than Thomas Alva Edison, the inventor of the audio phonograph, contacted Baird at a seance. The spirit of Edison tapped out a message in Morse code and told Baird that his Noctovision system would enable the living to speak with the dead. Hello? Well, it's a bit of a long story. A good friend of mine is a computer programmer, and they've got very, very good long-term experience of these uh, really very, very large computer systems that you would find you know, in insurance companies and oil companies. Uh, these are so-called mainframe computers which uh, take up an entire office or take up an entire floor and have to be specially air-conditioned, this kind of thing. They use very strange languages. And he told me about a phenomenon called emergent behaviour. This is where big computer systems, big telephone networks are doing things that nobody ever told them to do. For example, programs would run on their own, messages would appear on computer screens which nobody typed. As far as telephones are concerned, um, it would take the form of telephone calls to people, and there wouldn't be anybody else at the other end of the line. There's also a phenomenon known as the phantom fax, and this is where messages are being handwritten, usually in some kind of old-fashioned writing, and are being signed in some cases by famous people who died a long time ago. And there are several people around the world who are presently receiving faxes, handwritten faxes, from the spirit of Jules Verne, the famous uh, French science fiction writer who's been dead many, many years. I became very, very interested in this emergent behaviour because I had a feeling that it wasn't just due to errors in the system. I had followed the research of Sir William Crookes and Sir Oliver Lodge, and they were each pioneers of things like cathode ray tubes and radio waves. And I had come to the conclusion that many of the scientists in the 1900s were of the disposition that spirits could influence very, very tiny particles, such as electrons or photons. And when I heard about emergent behaviour, I immediately thought, could this be an example where a spirit is not strong enough to move a physical object? A spirit is not usually strong enough to pick up the receiver on a telephone and move the dial. 
But could this be, this emergent behaviour phenomenon, could it be a symptom of spirits trying to shift electrons down wires? Costume does. Granny? Who are you? No, uh uh, I don't remember. What? Hello, little one. <gasps> I am your friend. <gasps> we want the angel. Well, Phone Calls from the Dead is a, you know, it's a fascinating book. Um, there's dozens of cases in this book that have been collected by the authors. And we have transcripts of conversations. And the, the conversations are very, very touching. These are usually phone calls which are made within minutes or within a couple of hours of the death of someone. And a uh, typical example is where a son or a daughter receives a phone call from their parent and the parent says, uh, are you okay? And the daughter or the son says, yeah, I'm fine. We'll come over and visit you. And the parent might say, well, no, I'll come and visit you. I love you. And uh, these calls are touching and brief. And then the reality dawns that that phone call was made. Sometimes the spirits even leave messages on answer phone machines, which record the exact time of that call. And in many cases, that person had died previously that actual day. According to documents and memoirs held in the archives of the Edison Company of the United States, American genius Thomas Alva Edison, who invented the electric light bulb, the phonograph record player, and the movie cine camera, designed a machine in the 1920s which could be used to communicate with the spirits of dead people. Unfortunately, Thomas Edison passed away before his invention was complete. Several years later, at a seance attended by John Logie Baird in London, the spirit of Thomas Edison tapped out a message using Morse code. This eerie experience was recorded in John Logie Baird's autobiography, published by the Royal Television Society. The message from the spirit of the dead Thomas Edison told John Logie Baird 
that Edison was working on his own version of Noctovision, the infrared television system which could record images in the dark. The spirit of Edison told Baird that he had assembled a team of scientists in the spirit world who were working together to help living people speak with their dead relatives. Of man's gone. 